This is Titanfall 2. It's, uh, it's having a free weekend on Steam right now. I actually own it on the Xbox, but I wanted to jump into it again because everyone is just reminding me how great the singles player campaign All for this game is. I've seen oh. on the battlefields of the frontier. The pilot is the true dominant force. Fast and agile. Graceful, yet devastating. Perceptive, resourceful, and relentless. A pilot sees the world differently. Sheer walls become flanking routes. Pilots fight differently. Experienced in deception and maneuver, even overwhelming odds shift in their favor. But what truly separates the pilot from all the grunts and machines of the battlefield is the bond between a pilot and a titan. It's kind of funny to me how this is the same world as Apex Legends, because the tone is so different. Or an equal. The frontier has been the only home I've ever known. For years, our lands have been destroyed by the IMC, forcefully taking our resources, polluting and destroying our planets, and killing us off if we try to resist. Despite recent victories at Demeter and beyond, we have a long way to go before the IMC is defeated. Now, I serve as a rifleman in the militia, fighting to free the frontier. I'm a long way from becoming a pilot. But when that day comes, I hope I can live up to the honor. Both those titans just flatten each other. <laughs> I'll pull down the volume just a little bit. Let me know if there's any issues with the audio when you're listening to this. I am going to have to remind myself how to play this game, so I'm glad they're starting with the tutorial. Here we go, Rifleman Cooper. Oh, hell. Ship must have power cycled the sim pod since last time. We'll have to recalibrate it. Does that feel right to you, Cooper? All right, we're good to go. Let's see how much you remember from last time. Setting the neural link. Not quite the same as a Titan link, but it's similar. To learn new skills, we need to be in the right state of mind. Ah, march me there. Technically, I'm not supposed to be training you, but in you I see potential. Besides, we're at war. Who's got time for classes, eh? Here you go, up and over. So, J. Roy wants to know if I've beaten this campaign before. Yes, I have. I played all the way through Titanfall 2 ages ago when it first came out. I don't even know how old this game is now. But uh, yeah, no, I played the original. It's just, it's been, I played the original game all the way through and I played, I think, wait, the original game was just multiplayer, right? Yeah, I think Titanfall 2 was the first one that had a single player campaign. Um, so I played, but I played like, Titanfall 1 like crazy. Then I played Titanfall 2 all the way through and played a bunch of multiplayer. But it's been a while, so I've totally forgotten everything now. So I got, this tutorial is going to be necessary. Let's pick up the pace. Enabling jump kit assist. Jump kits operate on the principle of relaxed ability. Once your jump kit calibrates to your movement style, enhanced mobility becomes second nature. Beautiful, isn't it? Inspired by my home planet of Harmony. This is where I grew up. This is what we're fighting for, Cooper. Under here. 
Combat, things never go as you expect. You must be ready to use any weapon you can find on the field. These are just a few of the weapons I've come across out there. Time to hit the range. Load your weapon. To get more precision, aim down the side. Gotta take them all out before we can move on. Good. Back to the if you want. Head to the guy. So the people who made Titanfall, that's Respawn Entertainment, uh, who were sort of, uh, they were a bunch of refugees from a bad situation that came out of uh, uh, Infinity War after Modern Warfare 2. So these folks, they basically invented <laughs> sort of the, the Call of Duty style shooter, which is the style that, that really appeals to me. That's the one that, like, you know, every, I think everybody's got sort of a different shooter wavelength that they're on, like the, the, the type of shooter that appeals to them. I am very much on the Call of Duty slash Titanfall side. All right, got a new gauntlet for you to run today. Part time is two minutes. Gotta do better than that to continue. All right. Follow the ghost, find your own path. Oh, well, that wasn't good. Pilots have to strike a battle. Oh, I have to hit these guys. Paramount. You must okay. Also hit your target. I'm still figuring out what I'm doing. The gauntlet is where we practice those skills. Until the second feature. Ah! Oh crap. No! No! Dang it! <laughs> I am not good at this. Nice run. See the results board on the wall? at a new best time. Everyone has different strengths and weaknesses, so be sure to run this a few times with different weapons. Look hmm. at the results board for more tips on how to improve. Now that you're warmed up, if you want a real challenge, you can race against other pilot ghosts. <laughs> Word of warning, though. The pilots who recorded these ghosts are the best in the SRE. When you're done, I've got something special to show you. Okay, so I don't actually need to run this multiple times. The first time that I played Titanfall 2... What the? I'm already falling behind. Probably because I picked this gun. Oh, I'm just doing terribly. What am I doing? Why did I even bother with this? For some reason, I've just got a thing about wanting to run around with a revolver. Even if I'm no good at it. I'm actually doing better this time because of that. Oh wait, no! Oh almost. You were flying that time. Oh, I missed a target. Didn't count. Let's see what's next. I'm ready to see what's next. Good. You're gonna like this. Time you learn the other half of being a pilot. A Titan. Let's go call one in. It's about time. I'm ready. That's the spirit. But first, we're gonna need a little more space. That's my partner, BT. He's what? A Vanguard class. Homegrown militia technology. First Titan chassis we designed ourselves. One we didn't have to steal from the IMC. Go ahead, rifleman. 
Calling your fist tight. Oh, I have to call him over here? Look up to the sky. There he what? Is. Oh, what? All right, Rifleman. Sounds like it's about to hit the fan. <laughs> I'm pulling you out. Powering down all known essential systems. Cooper, ready up. Easy, Cole. He just left VR. He needs a minute to decompress. He'll be ready to go. Trust me. Yes, sir. Heads up. They're killing us. I'm trying to, anyway. Good session in there. You'll get the hang of it someday. We'll make a pilot out of you yet, Rifleman. But not today. No time. Last I love I'm that, how they... Son of a bitch. See you down there. <laughs> You're going to see a new planet today. Maybe even die on it. See you down there, Rifleman. Good luck. Get your ass out of the Simpod, Cooper. Meet at the dropship. People are talking constantly. I'm having trouble getting a word in edgewise. But uh, I really like the way that they... Um... Uh, yeah, sure. Regular difficulty. Why not? I'm just here to see the story, really. I'm not trying to uh, super challenge myself right now. Um, but yeah, I love the way they, 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 they sort of... They went with... My expectations were that they were going to teach me everything in the game in that tutorial, and they interrupt the tutorial for a war. And then part of the story is that I am unprepared to be a pilot, which is great. I mean, that's a great story to tell, right? Is that... Um, you know, if you're gonna if you're going to set the player up to have to learn to play in a new way that they haven't played in other games, uh, setting them up as someone as, as a character who is unprepared for what they're doing is is a really good way to approach it. Got it. So Nod Danim says uh, they're on their second run of the campaign. This is me starting a second run. Uh, yeah. I'm mostly playing this right now just out of nostalgia because, you know, Titanfall 2 is doing this free weekend. I hope a lot of people try it out for the first time. And so I'm kind of doing my part, I guess, to uh, show people that this game is cool. What's an enemy? hard for a gun to feel effective against uh, something metallic. Killed everybody? Ah, 
God, what the? Be more careful. Do that to me, please. We have 18 hours. 18 hours until the ark is sealed and ready for delivery. Oi, Rika! Leave the corpses alone, you sick bastard. We've got a job to do, eh? We make corpses, we don't clean them up. Let's go! He starts flowing down the river. <laughs> Lots of little touches here. Hey there, buddy. Oh, you're right. Oh, you're alive. BT. Transfer authorization to new pilot. Link. Bra <coughs> Bravo Tango. 7274. Cooper, take my Titan. Use my helmet and my jump kit. This is the real thing. Take care of him. So, Potato Aim 3D is uh, taking exception to the fact that I'm saying uh, in, in my in the title of my Twitch stream that I'm playing weird games. That is not an insult. Um, when I I play weird games, I play games that are sort of out of the ordinary, that sort of do surprising things because it helps me, you know, improve as a game designer to see all the crazy ideas people are bringing in. And I got to say, Titanfall is one of the weirdest games I've ever seen. It's kind of unbelievable that they even tried this, much less pulled it off. Hmm. Ah. Okay, so I'm looking for a power source. And the game didn't even have to say anything to sort of make it really clear what I needed to, ah, to do. Oh, what is wrong with you? Alright, so this is the best place to go. I guess we will practice what we've been doing. Hmm. Well, I like having pistols.
Okay, so I don't have double jump yet. Hello. Please die, monster. Yeah. I forgot there were, like, floaty collectibles in this game. So, uh, Potato Aim 3D is suggesting that I should raise my FOV. How come? I, 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 I'm not feeling anything... I'm offering you a brief amnesty. I don't think there's anything wrong with this. By the way, how's the audio? I, I know that I've got it turned up kind of loud. Can you hear me okay? goes online as shit. You think it's true? I'm a Texas saying about it. Many militia forces in the region. We will find them. We are advised to discard any weapons and surrender immediately. Do not attempt to resist. Lethal forces authorized hmm. against any armed militia personnel. Sure. The game's got some stealth to it, but uh, kind of okay if I suck at it. This game does make you feel like an absolute badass. <laughs> Looks like there's a um, zip line of some kind up there. Is this a thing I can do? Hello. I'm the best of the best. And I'm all out of bullets. <laughs> Ooh, shotgun. Okay, yeah, so we got some folks discussing field of view in the chat. Uh, how easy is it to mess with that? Because I, I actually like the current field of view, but you can raise it. So what's this is, what this is doing is basically um, widening the angle of the lens or like widening the angle of, uh, you know, there's sort of like a view, like a view frustum. Frustrum? Frustum? Frustum? Uh, Frust them, I think. Anyway, there's a shape <laughs> that you carve out on the map, uh, you know, to, to, to represent what you see. And your FOV is how wide that angle is. And so if I raise it, now I can see a lot more. It feels a... This could make me a little bit motion sick, though. This is a little much for me. Like, you do feel like you're moving... Like, when you're running with a high, fa high FOV, you feel like you're moving faster because you can see more of the world along the sides. Basically... Things that are alongside you move faster relative to you, appear to move faster relative to you than, um, than things that are in front of you that are foreshortened. And so if you can see more to the sides, you get more of sort of a parallax effect along the edges of the screen that make you feel like you're moving faster. But this is actually risking 
making me pretty unhappy. Uh, so I think I'm not going to play with the, <laughs> with the FOV really, really high. But it's interesting to be able to just, you know, different games have different FOVs. And it's interesting to see... Let's leave it like 80. It's interesting to see, you know, in a single game watching it change and sort of understanding what happens with the lens. FOV is also when you're zooming in and out with a camera, that's also changing your FOV. And that's what allows you to do things like take a picture of the sky with a massive moon. Uh, in real life, the moon isn't, isn't that big, but if you zoom in on the moon when it's near the horizon, you're narrowing your FOV. So you're only capturing a tiny little window and making, you know, sort of enhance, like bringing things closer. Um, you're sort of... When, when you zoom in, you're sort of compressing the distances between things. And when you zoom out, when you widen the FOV, you're enhancing the distances between things. And enhancing the distances between things is a great way to make yourself feel fast. A lot of games uh, will, they'll raise the FOV when, you're, when your car goes faster, for instance, to make you feel like you're going faster. So, you know, you make your car go 10% faster, but it looks like it's going 30% faster because the FOV changes. All right. Shots back on. Give me all kinds of different guns here, which is kind of cool. Hello. Hey, let's just uh, hide from this guy for a sec. Oh, the shotgun just turns people into paste. Oh. Ha <laughs> enemies to fight each other. I hear something. There it is. This game gives you so much mobility, it's crazy. Oh, I love that. You zoom in on those distant enemies and they have something rise into the frame. Knowing respawn, that was probably very intentional. These folks are some of the best at, like, making weird cinematic experiences happen in, in first person, which is really tough. Getting close. I must remind you that you are on the planet Titan. This is an IMC controlled planet. Uh, this level is kind of hard to read. Actually, they're actually, you know what? There actually is a weird, a weirdly coherent path through this absolute chaos. Nice way to create some tension, drop something right on this, the path I was about to walk into. Let's get back to the Titan. You wanted to make a difference. <laughs> 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 
Notice how much they're doing with so little. Oh, crap. Like, there's very little dialogue, very little explanation of what's going on, because you don't need very much. You just... You understand the situation. You know what it, you know what it means to be stranded. You know what it's like to be out of your depth. Sure, you say that now. Just wait till they got a gun to your head. What was that? <laughs> power low. Insufficient power. Working on it, buddy. Well, did I never do that? Power at two thirds. Data core reinitialized. Ocular system online. I played all the way Adjusting through this focus. game. Are you all right, pilot? <laughs> I played all the way through this game, and uh, I never got that achievement. Apparently. I think so. Wait, did you just call me pilot? Yes. The late Captain Lastimosa gave you the provisional rank of acting pilot. Congratulations on your promotion. You may call me BT. BT. Got it. My systems are rebooting, but a third battery will accelerate the process. I will remain here. All right. Another battery, please. There we are. I wonder, could I have gone Until this way I before? Mobile, I will assist you through your helmet radio when possible. No. Okay. This is a very subtle thing. Remember how my double jump was disabled until I went the other direction? I advise against turning yourself over to the IMC. Voice pattern analysis indicates they are lying. <laughs> Don't worry, BT. I'm not going anywhere. Understood, but I do recommend you move. IMC salvage teams are not far away. I mean I'm not leaving you. It is a common requirement for pilots to maneuver in situations without a linked Titan. Okay, I'm not gonna answer <laughs> I'm not gonna ask this question. Uh, so anyway, it's a subtle thing, but they, they basically didn't give you your double jump until you were already further down the other path. And the double jump is what it takes. To make to make it uh, into the into this path. Also, you know, they, they allow you to participate in this dialogue. I don't think any of this dialogue really makes a huge difference to the story. This is not like a Mass Effect RPG or something like that. But there is something about participating in the conversation, even in this very sort of minor way, that I think sort of enhances the sense that you're actually involved in the story, rather than being, you know, because they could have gone like, I mean, this. I don't think this team doesn't have the same level of budget as a lot of other uh, teams. Like, I'm pretty sure they, you know, they're not like an Assassin's Creed team or something like that. It would have been very tempting, especially with a game that, that wants to be as stripped down as this one is, to leave off a feature like that. I think the reason they invested in it was because there are downsides to being a silent protagonist, right? Uh, that, you know, that, like, you don't really get to know... Uh, th th there's a limit to how much the character can participate in the story. There's a little bit of a, you know... The advantage of it is you kind of can project yourself onto the character, theoretically, but it also means that, you know, your character doesn't really seem that invested in the story either. They don't, they don't, you know, talk to anyone. They don't get involved. They don't express themselves. And that can be sort of create some distance, right? So this, this is a nice compromise where they have the character talk. But, but also, if you have the character just talking all the time and has just a very specific attitude, that can also distance you a little bit from the character because they're just doing a bunch of things you're not controlling. So this is a nice little compromise where... They give your character a voice, they let you participate, but they put their participation in your hands, in your control. So to try to sort of get the best of both worlds of the silent protagonist and the voice protagonist. Okay, yeah, so this is the this is the area where they're really making you understand, making sure that you understand how to get around. system 
systems have been restored. The ambush of the 9th Militia Fleet has landed us far off course from our original destination. We are located in hostile territory. Be careful, we cannot stay here long. You think we can survive through this, BT? We have no other options. We will have to improvise and adapt if we wish to survive. How long did you serve with Lastimosa? Captain Lastimosa linked with me 973 days ago. Sorry. You guys must have been close. He was an excellent pilot. And a good friend. We know there are militia survivors out there. We will find you and we will track you down one by one. I ask you to come out of hiding while you still can. We have IMC search If you resist capture, you ah, what the? Yeah, so one thing I really like about the Titanfall slash Call of Duty approach to shooters is the feeling of precision. Like, they, they basically invented the sort of aim down sights method of handling console shooters. Where, you know, you always have this problem where... Pilot, your suit oh. has an emergency cloaking ability. This right, can I know. help you survive dangerous situations. Oh no, I'm invisible! Um, because you know, a controller is is intrinsically less precise than a mouse, and you know the the, the first person shooter was developed with a mouse in mind. Uh, well, actually, no, I shouldn't say that. That's not true. When it was brand new. Oh no! What the? When the shooters were brand new, actually... No, mouse look was actually a new feature that came in after, say, Wolfenstein and Doom. Uh, but you also, you know, those games didn't even have aiming up and down. You just, you know, you were only aiming around a, on a 2D plane. So, so yeah, so I guess one of the first big innovations in shooter design and shooter you know, control design was adding mouse look. Um, but then after that, we went a while with that being sort of standard. And the assumption that you really couldn't do a shooter well anywhere besides uh, you know a, a, a PC because you just didn't have the precision but uh, but then I think it was you know Halo did a really good job of sort of you know taking the first steps in that regard but I think one of the best uh, sort of big steps forward that was taken was taken by Call of Duty 2 which appeared on I believe the Xbox 360. And they basically used aim down the sights as a uh, aiming down the sights as a way to deal with sort of the the problems of a, of a controller because you know you want to have enough you know freedom of movement. I'm just moving as hard, fast as I can right now. Enough freedom of movement that you can you know be nav that you can navigate easily. You can sort of like change directions easily. Feel agile. But this, if if you're always moving at this speed, it's really hard to have precision aim. Uh, and it's really hard to sort of like tune a, con a controller absolutely perfectly. Modern controllers are better at it than older ones used to be. Uh, just the physical hardware is better at it. But uh, aiming down the sight though, then you can sort of restrict, this is as fast as I can move when I'm aiming down the sight. And so you can like give the player much more precision when they're aiming than when they're not. And so there's this, this great sense of precision that comes from playing a, you know, an Infinity Ward slash Respawn style shooter. BT, is there anyone alive on this ship? No. Scans do not detect any life signs within the MCS James McAllen, but 90% of the lifeboats have been ejected. There is still hope. BT, who is this voice? This is the commander of the Marauder Corps, a section of the Militia's Special Recon Squadron, or SRS. Her name is Sarah Briggs. Okay, so it's weird that I've been able to find this path. Like, this is the kind of path that you would expect to be impossible for a player to figure out. The fact that I did figure it out is a, um, it's not a testament to my skill. It's a testament to the skill of the level design, the level artist. Huh. <laughs> 
<laughs> no one might said, woohoo, I just got my Warlord Legacy on Dread, which is what I just did with the Bunny Lord, with Buzzard, the Sea of Thieves Ninja Hoodie Guy. So, okay, so it seems like no one Mai and I were kind of on a very similar path in State of Decay 2. We were both playing really weirdo characters trying to get the Warlord Legacy. Pilot had it. Yay! Oh no! To all malicious survivors, it would be in your best interest to turn yourselves in. Surely you would agree it is better for our infantry. Pilot, our location has been compromised. Uh oh. Um, do I have a decent weapon of any kind? Ah, stop. Funny, sometimes I get so used to those drones are IMC scouts. Wait a second. Enemy reinforcements will be on their way. We must complete the neural link immediately. Please install the final battery. So sometimes I get really so used to the fact that uh, that the HUD of a game is over there, you know, or is like on the corners of the screen or the bottom of the screen, that when I'm aiming and it actually is showing me my ammo count right next to my um, Crosshair, I don't notice it. It takes me a while to actually get used to reading it there because I'm so used to glancing down. I have that problem in Outriders, too. I'm constantly checking my ammo when there's an ammo gauge right next to my crosshair. I shouldn't have to. Power at full capacity. Pilot, we must establish a neural link in order to proceed. Please embark when ready. So the tank points out they're using so much augmented reality in this game, he's kind of surprised that they didn't place the helmets on the ground and just have them project something to float in the air rather than have the helmets themselves float in the air. That's true, actually. That would have been, that probably would have been a little bit more sort of like on brand for the world. I love the transition into a Titan in this game. It's one of my favorite things about this game, <laughs> visually anyway. Establishing neural link. Neural link established. Rifleman Jack Cooper, you are now confirmed as acting pilot of BT-7274. Protocol 2, uphold the mission. Our orders are to resume Special Operation 217. Rendezvous with Major Anderson of the SRS. I'm detecting incoming enemy forces. Protocol 3. Protect the pilot. Reinitializing critical systems. Vortex I want to shoot them. Online. The vortex shield catches incoming rounds and missiles. Release the button to launch any captured objects back at the enemy. <laughs> Fun. Hello. Pilot, the Acolyte pod is online. This shoulder-mounted rocket pod will lock onto multiple enemy targets. The longer you hold down the button, the more locks you will achieve. I love this absolutely contrived scenario to teach me how to use these weapons. Neural link complete. Primary <laughs> weapon control and motion link reestablished. Enemy Titanfall detected. Uh oh. We will have to fight our way to safety. Get ready. So Potato Aim 3D asks. Uh, oh, actually, wait a minute. Let's answer this first. You sure about this? Yes. Trust me. Oh crap. Militia Titan spotted. Chassis number seven two seven four. Haha! <laughs> well done, pilot. Our combat effectiveness rating has increased. 
from zero. <laughs> Pilot, I detect more IMC salvage teams on the way. Our only chance of survival is to uphold our mission of rendezvousing with Major Anderson. Until then, you and I are on our own. Marking your HUD. Yeah, there it is. This little line. Quickly. I gotta say, this little line that sort of connects an objective to its waypoint is pretty clever. Anyway, so the Potato Aim 3D asks, what do you think of speedrunning a game? Uh, I am impressed by people who speedrun games. I don't think I can. I don't have the patience to, In like, try to the survive, same thing. We must keep moving. Shush, BT. I don't have the patience to uh, try the same thing again and again and again. I have to play things that continually change and get, and, and, and get different. Potato Web, yeah, yeah, if you speedrun this game, I was actually thinking that this game is specifically designed very well for speedrunning because there's so much potential skill that goes into uh, the process of navigating the game, not much less, you know, killing the enemies. Uh, so it's like every part of this game has gets some advantage from you being skillful at, at at pulling off all the little tricks. Pilot, the IMC will continue to search for us. Our only chance of survival is to rendezvous with Major Anderson, 60 clicks from our current location. We will have to improvise and adapt if we wish to survive. Wait, Major Anderson is a character from Ender's Game. We're taking heavy casualties down here. Any militia forces, please assist. We've suffered heavy losses. Good guy. We. Not only do I think of Major Anderson as being an Ender's Game character, no to go, pilot. <laughs> I also think of BT as being an electronic musician from the 90s. Oh, okay, so this is a special ability I have. I guess I should save that for later next time. I like how they kind of use like augmented reality to, uh, to highlight the weak points on Titans. Is Tone, like, short for Antonio, or, like, what? what's going on with these guys here? Okay, I'm not activating my burst core until I know what it means. Score. Wait, where'd he go? Dang it! There he is. Are we good? Oh, what is this? New Titan loadout, huh? Okay, so Expedition is a machine gun. Semi auto cannon, I do like those. Tracking rockets. Force field blocks incoming fire on one side. Sonar lock. Titan weapon is an advanced design and may give us a tactical advantage. All right, let's give this a try. I've forgotten everything about this game, so everything everything I'm discovering is like I'm discovering it new. Pilot, with the tone loadout, we can lock on enemies and target them with tracking rockets. Okay. This will be useful in direct combat. Okay, so the other one was designed to spread the targets, to spread out and hit different targets. This one is designed to 
zero and a one. Oh, but he's got. Salvo core ready. Salvo core, huh? Oh gosh, what am I doing? Oh gosh, apparently I can't get in that liquid. I'm assuming this is the right way to go. Hello. Oh, what? I didn't know this was a place I could be. Anybody else? Where's the direction? Any oh, up here? Pilot, our path through this facility is blocked by a flow regulation gate. There should be a control interface nearby. That's my buddy, right? Yeah. Maintenance override engaged. Opening flow regulation gate. Warning, toxic fumes dispersing in main chamber. Activating control room safety airlock procedures. Pilot, the safety airlock has sealed you in the control room. You Sweet. must find another way out. We have no choice but to split up. Split up? Sounds risky. Given our dire circumstances, this is a risk worth taking. Pilot, I am tracking your location. Recommend you seek an exit. You got it, BT. You do the same. Copy that, pilot. So the tank says that what games are you forgetting how to play while you learn to play this one? All of them. Listen up. This is Kane. What we have here, my IMC and militia friends, is a failure to communicate. I want him to go off the edge. Many militia left in the facility, just so you know, this is Kane's place. You're welcome to stay as long as it takes to kill you. Which, by the way, not be long. So, I never find it convincing when a character is named Kane. It's actually about the most cliched name I've ever heard in my life. It actually kind of knocks me right out of a game when somebody's named Kane in it. This is Raccoon 3, 9th Militia Fleet. We're held up in oh crap! Facility. I didn't think I was in that much trouble. Alright, here we go. Roger. That twitchy mode doesn't get any kills. Just so you know, this is Kane's place. 
welcome to stay as long as it takes to kill you. Which, by the way, not be long. Wow, nice miss. <laughs> Sheesh. I missed like twice. <laughs> All right, we'll try this again. Roger. That switchy must have a kill. Ready, militia left in the facility. Just so you know, this is the game's place. You're welcome to stay as long as it takes to kill you. Which, by the way... That went way better. Raccoon 3, 9th Militia Fleet. We're held up in the reclamation facility. The INCF's new mechanized infantry. We're trapped. Pilot, I'm detecting friendly militia forces along your path. They may need assistance. Whew, all right. So. Kraber, huh? I guess we'll hold on to this in case we need it. Captain, I see something moving by the pipe. Eyes up. It's a friendly pilot. Captain, we got a friendly militia pilot. Crap. Hold your fire. He's SRS. Look at his helmet. Hey, everybody. Good to see a friendly pilot, sir. Is any extra speed. guns lying around? I can use some help up ahead. What we got here? L star. It's that. I don't know. Probably better than what I got. Ah, what? Oh, it's a first fire gun. Neat. And this is a a car. There's so many different guns in this game. Oh, crap. I guess those explode. <laughs> Captain, I see something moving by the pipe. Eyes up. It's a friendly pilot. Captain, we got a friendly militia pilot. Hold your fire. He's SRS. What? I have no idea why it felt like that. I see a friendly pilot, sir. The squad is taking a beating. They can use some help up ahead. Let's go grab that thing I grabbed before. Oh wait, what's that R9 whatever? I don't know, let's grab that. Hello. He's got an L star. Here we go. Hello. Okay, so that one's not gonna blow up, but... Okay, does that have something to do with shooting that red thing in their back? That's what makes them explode, I guess. Hmm. Oh, gosh. I guess that, uh... I guess that sniper rifle would have been useful against some of these guys in the back. I guess shooting them in the battery pack and making them explode when they're in the middle of melee attacking my friends isn't the best move. Do I have a way across? This is an extremely violent gun. <laughs> Engaging militia forces. It's explode in guts. Go. You go ahead. Stop. 
die? Why would you die? I think this thing doesn't ever need to be reloaded, or... Does it just have a huge magazine? I feel like we've been walking for days. Do you require rest? No. Good. There is no time for rest. We must. No! The mission. No! Well, I did that wrong. Um. Wait, where am I now? <laughs> we'll try this again. Wait, this is this is where I came from. We're going this way. All right. Hmm. I needed to get higher up. All right, that's what I needed to do. Death animations for this thing are crazy. Splatter effects. <laughs> I mean, oh. Dang it, do not kill me. I actually don't want to go back to the beginning of this section. Okay, I thought I could go that way. I guess not. I guess I did something. Um, maybe not. All right, maybe that did something. Um, okay, this feels like a dead end. Is there somewhere I need to... Oh, wait, oh, here's, here's an exit. Hello. So I got word that there's some Vanguard class Titan and an SRS pilot taking out my IMC. Stop. Whoever you are. Not bad at all. I just hope you're better than the last one I killed. All right. Um. There's a chat. Oh, hello. I take forever to kill. I lost him. Sideline, track it. Not over here. Stay alert. So right here. He's right on us. I don't actually love this gun. It's definitely got a splashy death effect, but it's also slow between shots. Fortunately, I don't have another gun. See what my other options are here. So you have that shotgun again. Something else? Fire? St oh, that's a. Oh, that's just a throwy thing. Um. Anything over here? Guns don't really show up that much on the ground. I think that's probably intentional. Because uh, they give them a little bit of augmentation. Hello? Anyway, I think that they actually... Because they have every character drop a, their gun when they die, if they made the gun stand out even more, uh, it would be a problem. You too, BT. Where are you? I'm following the stream of sludge. The current is strong up ahead, suggesting an exit. Keep moving forward. This game definitely has that sense of like, you know, you can do mirror's edge style speed running with it. Is that a pilot's helmet up there? 
in addition to playing it like a shooter. <laughs> Pilot helmet. Um, I'm fine. I'm not finding most of these though. Pilot, our paths will intersect just up. Oh ahead. crap! No, no, I'm not doing a good job. Okay, okay, hold on. <laughs> hey, buddy. Um, I thought I could get up there, but I guess not. I guess it's not important for me to. It's a shiny thing. Nothing. Woohoo! Oh, I see BT. What's this? Long time no see, BT. On the contrary, your helmet provided me with a live feed of your actions. You fought well out there, pilot. The controls to deactivate the sludge flow are in the next chamber, marking your HUD. I must destroy every robot. Okay, so way over there. All robots must die! Nope. I assume there's gonna be resistance in here. Good, I get to meet this guy. He seems nice. <laughs> he runs away. Where am I, where am I trying to get again? Oh, right there. All right. Pump filter system. Emergency shutdown initiated. Back up. Pump shutdown speed is at 20%. What else is going on? Oh, ah, what the? What are you? The sludge falls contain a high concentration of heavy metals. They are interfering with my target systems. Wait. Are we done? You got the last of the weird spider things? It's weird. I've gotten so used to playing Outriders that whenever I see a bunch of enemies like clustered somewhere in, in the distance, I like my, my, my first inclination because I play a trickster in Outriders is to teleport to them. And I keep like getting frustrated that I can't teleport to these guys. What the? Shut up on both sides of me? how to use these fire stars. I guess it just kills one guy? Guys, oh my gosh! I'm all out of bullets. Okay, gotta switch this gun now. Oh, better gun. Hi. Oh, also, 
I'm in bad shape. Pump shutdown sequence at 90%. Again, frustrated that I can't teleport to these guys. Oh, you guys here? Hi. Pump shutdown sequence complete. Visual contact re-established with pilot. Commencing supporting fire. Danger close. Sonar pulse? What's that doing? Pilot, that was a difficult battle. You yeah. handled yourself well. I have noted it for the record. So I have identified an exit on this side. This way. Alright. Uh, I love these transitions into the into the Titan. Protocol two, uphold the mission. Our orders are to resume special operation two one seven. Rendezvous with Major Anderson of the SRS. <laughs> it's so ridiculous that my Titan can do this. That these space so basically. They were able to create these spaces where both I and my Titan could navigate them comfortably. Like you, they basically, whoa. You Kane. were not invited to Kane's party. At least we're gonna and kill that's him why you're dead. fast. <laughs> well, well, another runaway hero with an SRS Vanguard class Titan. Well, now we're talking. <laughs> Bring it. Let's get this party started, Scrub. Salvo Corps ready. Pilot, stay out of Kane's thermite residue. It causes heavy damage. So I have to hit him with a certain number of shots before it counts as being locked on. I kind of like this lock-on method, so... Ha-ha! <laughs> ha <laughs> Take that, you jerk! That, that's what you get for being named Kane. Kane's helmet radio is still intact. We should retrieve it. Okay, fine. We need reinforcements in the tunnel. Kane, have copy. Over. Coming, Kane. enemy communications has a strong history in warfare. This will work to our advantage. In order to survive, we must keep moving. I love BT just stating the obvious all the time. Famous Fox King says, please don't neglect your relationship with BT. It's one of the best parts of this game. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I have, so, um, uh, somebody else was saying earlier, um, Oh, oh yeah, it was, it was also Fox King said, oh man, to experience this game for the first time. Yeah, I remember how surprised I was the first time I played this game, and I just had no idea what to expect, and I kind of, you know, because Titanfall 1 was a multiplayer-only game, and so when Titanfall 2 came out, there's it was easy to assume that the single-player game would just be sort of some, like, uh, uh, I don't know, 
there to check a box, but not really there to impress anybody. And then they did so many clever things with it. It just blew everybody away. Like everyone was really, I think, really surprised and impressed at how good the single player campaign was. But I mean, they shouldn't have been that surprised and impressed. You know, I mean, Respawn did come from a Call of Duty background, early Call of Duties, some of the, you know, best, most cinematic, crazy, uh, you know, experiences that people had had in first person in a video game. And so of course they could do it. But then on the other hand, you know, the same people can leave a studio that's got a, a culture that's very good at making a certain kind of game. They can start a new game, uh, start a new studio, and sometimes uh, whatever magic was in the old studio doesn't come with them. And so I think nobody really knew one way or the other whether or not Respawn was going to be able to continue to pull it off after leaving the Call of Duty team. But they totally did. Uh, I mean, every game they made so far, you know, Titanfall, Titanfall 2, Apex Legends, and um, uh, the, the, the Star Wars-y thing. Um... <laughs> Whatever that was called. Um, they're all really good. You know, these people really know what they're doing. So uh, I'm looking forward. To, um, I think they've been hinting recently they're working on some other new IP. And so I'm excited to find out whatever that is. One of the, like, sort of, um, like, a unicorn type achievement that you can make in the video game industry is establishing an identity for your studio where people recognize that your studio makes quality things and you can keep making different things and people will still come and buy them because they trust you. That's very, very hard to pull off. Most studios, you know, people, uh, players will identify with the game the studio makes and they won't even realize who the studio is. And so a lot of times studios feel very bound to making the same game again and again and again because it's the only thing that people will recognize as having sort of a, a pedigree, as having, you know, a, a, a value that sort of is carried from game to game. So Respawn has started to establish itself as a company that can make all kinds of different things and people will, you know, can rely on them uh, to achieve a certain level of quality. So, anyway. Major Anderson went this way. It could be a shortcut to the rendezvous point. I recommend we proceed. So, he recommends that we proceed. I actually recommend that I need to quit. I've actually got a lot of stuff to get done today. And uh, if I keep playing Titanfall all day, uh, it's going to be a problem. So... Uh, let's not do that, but thank you all so much for hanging out with me today. This was a lot of fun for me this morning. Um, I am going to be back tomorrow morning, usually around 7 a.m. Uh, Pacific time, so, um, I've got a new schedule for anybody who, you know, has not been, been following me on Twitter. Uh, you can check it out, uh, you can check out the schedule on Twitch, I think it's listed, but basically, uh, I used to stream every morning around 7 o'clock, and right now, like, between work and the kids' school and stuff like that, it's just, it's a little bit too much, and so I've, I've cut it back to just Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays at 7, so... Uh, today I was a little bit late, but I'll try to hit around seven. Um, so if you want to subscribe to my, actually, okay, hold on. Tw I used to stream simultaneously to Twitch and YouTube, but now that I'm a Twitch affiliate, I can't stream simultaneously to YouTube anymore. So I release these later on YouTube. So if you want to follow me on Twitch so that you can, you know, get notified or whatever, when, uh, whenever I play, I would love that. I'd love to have you all back here. I've got, you know, uh, since I became an affiliate, I've like created some channel point rewards and things. I don't know if people will be interested in that, but whatever. Uh, but if you're watching me on YouTube later, you can subscribe to my channel because I'm going to put a thing right there that, that lets you do that and other videos on the left side of the screen. So enjoy those and I'll see you all later.